This video will cover Chapter 8 from Econometrics, talking about multicollinearity, what perfect and imperfect multicollinearity are in multiple regression analysis. We'll conduct tests in Minitab and talk about the consequences and remedies for multicollinearity. Perfect multicollinearity is a violation of Gauss-Markov assumption 6. If we have perfect multicollinearity, it really means that one of our x variables is a perfect function of one of our other x variables. So I have an example here with two x's, x1 and x2. x1 is a perfect linear function of x2. In other words, for each value, of x2 we might pick, we could perfectly predict what the value of x1 would be. So we really aren't able to capture the effect of two different variables in the equation. The good thing is any software you use to calculate the multivariate regression will randomly throw out one of the x's that is perfectly collinear. So we'll know quickly that we have a problem. Then you would need to go back and adjust your equation. Which of the two variables is more important for you to keep in the equation? The other issue could be imperfect multicollinearity. Now that's not a violation of our Gauss-Markov assumption, but it is a problem. So we'll look at that same example where we have x1 and x2. x1 is a function of x2, but not a perfect function. In other words, there's some error x2 does not perfectly predict x1, but it kind of predicts x1. So for different values of x2, we can sort of guess what x1 would be, but not perfectly figure it out. So let's discuss the consequences of having imperfect multicollinearity. The first thing to know is that it doesn't bias the estimates of the betas. In other words, the beta hats are not biased, so we can count on them for interpretation. However, the variances of the beta hats increase. Remember, when the variances of the beta hats increase, that decreases our test statistic or our t-score. That's the same thing as saying it increases the p-value. And that increases the probability that we will commit a type 2 error. Remember, a type 2 error is when we fail to reject a null that we should. In other words, we have a variable that should appear statistically significant, but it doesn't. A third consequence is that the beta hats, our estimates of the true beta, become more sensitive to the specification changes we might make to the model. In other words, if we make small changes like adding a variable or taking away a variable, those beta hats are likely to move more than they should. The fourth and final consequence is that the adjusted R-squared is mostly unaffected from imperfect multicollinearity. So it may go up a little bit, may go down a little bit from what it should be, but it's pretty much unaffected. So how do we detect multicollinearity? There are two things we're going to do. We're going to run the correlation coefficients, which we use the little r for correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient allows us to see if there's collinearity between two of our x variables. This will not test for multicollinearity, it will test for collinearity. In other words, do two x's move together a lot? We typically say if the correlation coefficient is greater than or equal to 0.8, we might want to consider taking that variable out of the equation. And I should note that's 0.8 in absolute value. The second method is actually calculated in the regression. These are called the variance inflation factors, or for short, we just call them VIFs. What the computer does behind the scenes is take each individual x in the model and it runs a regression of all the other x's on that one x. It calculates the r squared, and then in turn calculates this VIF. It runs k regressions like this, so for each x, it's automatically behind the scenes running each of these regressions and calculating all of the VIFs. If the VIF is 1, there is no multicollinearity because the r squared would be zero. In other words, the movement of one x is not explained at all by the movement of the other x's. However, it's highly unlikely that you'll get exactly one. Remember, spurious correlation. 
However, if the VIF is greater than five, we say there is severe multicollinearity and you really should address the issue in your equation. I've created a simple example here for us to use these two detection techniques in Minitab. In Minitab, we'll use STAT, basic statistics, and then this function called correlation. This will allow us to calculate the correlation between variables. The data we've got is consumption of students and their income and assets. So when we get into correlation, we're going to punch in the variables we want to see the correlations of and hit OK. The only correlation we're truly interested in for this purpose is the correlation between disposable income and liquid assets. Consumption is our Y variable, so we're really only trying to see if there's some collinearity between disposable income and liquid assets. This number is very high. It's above our 0.8. So we have some cause for concern about using both of those variables in the same equation. That actually makes pretty good sense. Our liquid assets are probably a function of our disposable income. As we have more income, we are likely to have more liquid assets. Let's go ahead and test the VIFs anyway. So we'll go to STAT, regression, regression, fit regression model. We're attempting to pr predict consumption, so that's our response variable. And then we're trying to use liquid assets and disposable income as our predictors. Click OK and we'll get our regression output. You'll see in the coefficient block, the VIFs. So there's a very high relationship based on the VIFs between liquid assets and disposable income. Both of these are greater than five. Now you might be asking, will the VIFs always be equal to each other? In this particular case, the VIFs are equal to each other because we only have those two X's in the equation. If we have more than two X's in the equation, those VIF values will not be equal to each other. This actually tells us we have to decide which of those two variables is most important or potentially leave them both in. In general, what are our remedies if there is multicollinearity? We can do nothing. That would depend on the problem that I'm trying to solve, the model I'm trying to estimate. Drop the redundant variable. I think that could be the case for our consumption variable. Liquid assets are likely nowhere near as important for a student in college in terms of consuming their goods they're most likely consuming out of their disposable income. Or we could just increase the sample size. If we increase the sample size, it's possible that the 2x variables don't move together as much. And also, just increasing the sample size will cause our variances to go down. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.